Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have a Lenovo ThinkPad T460S. I'm gonna take you on a teardown or disassembly tour, show you all the major components you can access after getting inside. So first thing guys, power down your computer the correct way, make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then gonna flip it over to access your bottom case screws. Now keep in mind this large screw right there, you don't have to take that screw out unless we're going deeper into the computer, that's your keyboard screw. So unless you need to remove your keyboard or get into any other deeper part of the computer on that end, we don't need to remove that screw. To take off our bottom case, we have these three screws on top and these two screws here. Depending on your exact model, the screws may actually come out of the computer or they may stay in the bottom case, but just un unscrew from the threading. So either way, unscrew those. Then we're gonna take a small, flat, preferably plastic pry tool. I say plastic because metal pry tools can scratch your case a lot more than plastic ones can. We're gonna take the pry tool and go across the seam all the way around and gently but firmly pry up this bottom case from the rest of the computer. As you're doing that, make sure to not put the pry tool too far in. You could damage some internal components. Just keep it on the edge. And if you get stuck in one spot and you can't seem to make any more progress, leave it, go to the other side and continue in the other direction. After you've removed your bottom case, this is what we're looking at for the inside of the computer. Now, just a quick note guys on computer repair in general, whenever I'm working on a laptop in my shop, I have it sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet go a long way to avoid damaging things in your computer when you're working on it. If you need any help with any tools or supplies for your repair project, there'll be a link above, also below in the description with a, a few of the tools and supplies that I use in my shop. Also, before I touch anything inside a computer, I will either remove or at least unplug the batteries. It makes it safer to work on the computer when as little power as possible is running through it. Now in this model, you actually have two batteries. You have this larger one down here and this shorter one up top. So I'll show you how to get at both of these. For the bottom, you have three screws on top. That's all you have. After undoing those screws, you'll peel up this piece of tape just enough to see that plug. This is not a plug that you have to pull out of the battery and it's not a plug that you have to pull out of the motherboard. It's a sit in plug. And I'll show you what it looks like when the battery's removed. So you see those pins right there? So the battery just kind of sits on those pins and plugs in. So as you remove your battery after that tape is removed, you can just take it right off of there. For those of you that wanted the battery information, the bottom battery, it's got two different model numbers you can search for. The first one that is most common is 00HW022, or it's SB10F46460. I'll have that information below in the description. And also keep in mind, guys, all the components, all the replacement parts that I'm going to go through in this video, there'll be a list of those in that same link that I just told you about with all the tools and supplies. Um, it'll have a list of all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model, including your battery RAM, uh, solid state drive, things like that. Next, we have the upper battery here. You have a screw here on the right, a screw here on the left, and same thing right there, same kind of plug. You just peel that tape back a little bit, and that's a sit inside plug there. As you can see, it looks very similar to the bottom one. So after you get your screws out and you take that tape off, you just pick that battery up from that spot. Okay, so after your batteries have been removed or at least unplugged, it's generally easier to remove the bottom one, by the way. Um, now we can proceed deeper into the computer. You see your left speaker here on the right side of my screen, and then you have the speaker on the left side of my screen. They're connected to each other by a wire that runs down here under the battery. And this speaker does not plug into the motherboard. This one plugs into the motherboard. So each speaker has three screws you have to remove. And then it plugs into the motherboard right here. 
And again, as mentioned before, it's best to not pull on wires when unplugging things. Try to just manipulate the plug if at all possible. And as you can see in your computer and in this picture, there's a grip on either side, on the top and bottom of that plug. So you can pull that out with your fingernails or with a pry tool, but that would be fairly easy to get out without pulling on those wires. Again, if you wanted some replacement speakers, I'll have a couple options below in the description in that link. The next thing I'll shout out is your storage and your memory. So you have your solid state drive here and your RAM here. The way that RAM works, there's a spring-loaded metal arm on either side. The way to get the RAM out is you pry those arms apart from each other, away from the RAM stick gently. The RAM stick will then pop up most times, and then you can slide it out of this port. To put the RAM stick back in, as you see, there's a long section here and a short section there. So you can only get RAM in one way, the correct way. After you fit it in there, you just press down on the middle. These arms will latch onto it and secure it in place. Now for the RAM information, this was PC4 2133 RAM. Um, and depending on your model, uh, depending on whether you have four gigabytes on board or eight gigabytes on board, your max RAM would be 20 or 24 gigabytes for this computer in most models. Uh, that would mean in either case, you'd max it out with a 16 gigabyte stick right there. So below in that description, in that list of all the parts, I'll have some 16 gigabyte options. I'll even throw in a couple eight gigabytes if you guys are just looking to replace it and you don't really care to upgrade. As far as your solid state drive, it's an M.2 port right over here. You just undo this single screw right there and the uh, solid state drive will release and then you can pull it to the left out of this port right there. I think this was a pretty small solid state drive there in this computer, so I'll put some upgrade options in that list. Uh, I'll try to show you guys a 500 gigabyte, a terabyte, um, some upgrade options for that. Next thing I'll shout out is your Wi-Fi card right here above your solid state drive. Just like the solid state drive, it's got a single screw right there in the middle. After removing that screw, the Wi-Fi card will release, and then just watch out here, you get your gray and your black antenna wire. Uh, those are just snaps though those will just snap right off and then you can snap them back down and i'll have some wi-fi replacements in that list as well if you guys are looking to gain access to your fan or your heat sink cpu area that's right over here the fan is not screwed down itself it's just attached to the heat sink and the fan the blue wires here they plug into the motherboard right there so fan wires are typically fragile guys try very hard not to pull on them try just to pull out that plug right there to the right and that should come out of that plug. And then the heat sink is screwed down by these four screws over the CPU. If you guys are looking for help uh, with applying thermal paste, there'll be a video link below in the description, a small tutorial on how to reapply thermal paste. You definitely want to clean all the old stuff off. You don't want to put new paste on top of old paste. Um, and then when reapplying the thermal paste, you don't want to put too much. So Again, I'll have that tutorial link below in the description if you guys want to look at that. Uh, the last thing I'll shout out here, I guess, is your LCD cable right there. It's got a bar on it right here. You'll see in your computer it comes down bottom. Take your plastic pry tool and just pop that bar up, and that'll release the LCD cable to pull out. Keep in mind, if you are replacing an LCD assembly or an LCD itself, make sure that your batteries are removed, unplugged, because when you plug your LCD cable into your LCD, if there's any power running through your computer, it could burn your LCD out right away. So be careful of that. So that's the video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. To support the channel, please remember to like and share, subscribe if you enjoy this type of DIY tutorials, and for those of you that want to support the channel a little further, you can always leave a small donation, and there's a couple ways to do that. First, right below the video to the right hand side, you'll see the super thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your cash app, find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount, and you can even leave a little note. So thank you so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.